Hi, welcome to my next video. This time I wanted to show you the next part in the series in which I paint my made up stores, so the new storefront series. There are some videos on my YouTube channel from the previous pieces that I did in the series, but I did not film all of them. I did 10 illustrations of these made up Japanese stores, but I filmed I think like 5 of them. And I thought that this series was kind of complete, but um, I still had a lot of ideas for more stores because I just had a lot of ideas myself and also you sent a lot of interesting ideas too. I had a list, I still have it, a long list of interesting stores and I think I completed only like one tenth of all the ideas that I had in this file. Also because this year I'm doing a bigger project that takes most of my time and I don't really know when I'll have something to show you. I wanted to have something that I can do when I'm kind of tired with this big project and just want to do something fast and refresh myself with something fun. So doing new storefronts from this series is actually perfect for that. I can just go to the list of ideas, choose a shop that feels good for my current mood and just draw it, paint it and upload the video for you to see also. This is the store number 11 in this series. I wanted to paint something that I would not usually do in a series of my made up stores because I'm not so much interested in a store like this because this one sells kimonos. But the idea came to me when I was talking with Kana about how kimonos and other things were sold in Edo, so in old Tokyo. And she told me that uh, in Edo shops that sold kimonos were really really high ceiling buildings with really high ceiling and the kimonos would be just hung up from the ceiling you would look up at them and at the various designs and various like fabrics that they had on offer and the people would be on a tatami below I wanted to do a similar shop that would be believable right now, so not so huge as the ones uh, on the illustrations from Edo period, but just a shop that you could have in a town somewhere that would also have a similar atmosphere to this. Maybe on the second floor the kimonos would be displayed, hung up from the roof beams of the second floor, and maybe actually there's a part where there's no floor between the first and the second floor. So if you come in from the first floor and step up onto the tatami and look up, you can see through the hole in the ceiling the kimonos just hanging there on the second floor. And also because the kimonos are there, I wanted to open the windows on the second floor so you can see them from outside. And also I wanted to put some kimonos on mannequins outside of the store and maybe on a traditional wooden hanger for kimonos like this wide one. I wanted the shop to be traditional of wooden construction but I didn't want it to make it too retro so it's um, too run down. Just a shop that is old but is still used every day. Also I kind of like this idea of kimonos being used every day as just everyday clothes. I would like to see more of the traditional Japanese clothes just outside on the street so I wanted to show a store that you would not be kind of intimidated by, you would like to go there and see what they have interesting on sale and also this shop should accept old kimonos and buy them and then resell them, remake old kimonos so reuse the fabric and when I was talking with Kana about this idea she told me that to actually really wash a kimono you have to kind of undo it so you get only the base fabric and then you connect the pieces of fabric together again into one sheet you wash them and then you um, dry them but to dry them properly they have to be put on a board or um, hung in a special way so the fabric does not shrink. I decided therefore to add a kind of a balcony to the top part of the building so the staff of the shop can hang there the fabric that has been washed and has to be hung in this special way so it looks interesting also from outside and in the picture. Not going straight into the drawing but thinking a bit about the store, about the place, what is it for, what does it sell, looking up a bit of the history of what this shop sells and what shops like this looked like, uh, for example in the Edo period or just what they look like right now. 
talking about this with Kana, for example, step by step, piece by piece, the image of this shop kind of forms in my head so I can start working on the first sketches. Even though these pieces are something that I'm doing as a fun project, uh, the process is not straightforward at all. I have to think a lot when I'm making a new store like this because it has to be on one side realistic and on the other side interesting and kind of a bit fantastic, so it's not just usual. So I first do a thumbnail or a few thumbnails to test some ideas, to think what I want to put in this picture. Then I will do a bigger sketch, also in the sketchbook, just uh, drawing with my pencil, to figure out how everything kind of works together, the size of things and how to add depth and so on. Then I did a very faint underdrawing with the big evolution pencil on watercolor paper, which is the hot pressed watercolor paper, so the one that does not have so much texture. Having that ready, I could do the line work with a fountain pen. I'm using here the Indigraph EF Nib fountain pen with waterproof ink. And this is a Kakimori brand dark gray ink. And because this is a store that I'm making up, I don't have any reference photos, like direct reference. I have to figure out the colors too. So after the lines are complete, I just photograph them with my iPad and do a quick test of colors in Procreate. This is what you are seeing right now on the screen. Here I can experiment without being afraid that I will spoil the liner that I already did. I can take my time, test some options, and when I'm happy with the color scheme that came out, I can start with the watercolors. Here I'm using the Mijello Mission Gold watercolors because just how vibrant the colors are in this set, and I'm painting using the Procreate color test as my guide. Okay, that's enough of me explaining, have fun watching the rest of the process, and I'll meet you at the end of the video.
Okay, the picture is nearly complete. Painting the whole thing with watercolors took me a bit more than I was expecting because I spent a whole day doing this. But I liked the result, I hope you liked the video and the whole painting process. I will be making more illustrations in this series in between working on my other projects, so there will be more parts in these videos too. As always feel free to comment, share and subscribe and you can also support me on Patreon. It's your support there that allows me to do my private projects and these videos also. Thank you very much for your support there. Okay, that's it. See you in the next one. Bye.